Hey everyone, welcome to Professor Long's Lectures in Anatomy and Physiology. I'm aware that there's light and writing all over my face. Maybe if I stand over here you can see me better. But I just want to show you how to access some of the images for our lab. These, um, this lab is to go over some of our slides and our skin model. And I have to project them here because I don't have a camera that looks through our microscope very well. So, I'm going to be showing you how to find these. If you go into Canvas and then you log in, and it takes you to the Canvas dashboard. When you go into the main course, one of the things you have to do is click the Anatomy and Physiology Resources link and enroll in the Anatomy and Physiology Resources. If you watch my introductory video on Canvas, you know how to do this. So uh, once you click on this link, it will take you to a page that has all of our uh, images. You want to go to the 2402 images, you want to go to Lab Practical 1. All of the models I've been showing you are here. For example, the anterior view of the eye, we could go over that. And I'm going to come across the screen. I just want to see what y'all are seeing. I want to make sure, yeah, there you go. So we could go over all this anatomy together, and we've already done so using some models. Now, I'm going to go back one screen, and I'm going to show you the slide of the skin model. So this is our skin model, and these are the structures that you need to know. We're doing our sensory physiology. We've already covered the skin in part 1 AMP, so this would be the epidermis, this layer would be called the dermis, and this would be the hypodermis. In hairless skin, right in these little pockets called dermal ridges, we have these little white bundles of cells with some tissue wrapped around them. These would be called Meissner's corpuscles, and you see their axons coming out. So those little structures are Meissner's corpuscles. They do fine touch, so we want them close to the top. Down near the bottom, way down here, we have this structure that's actually wrapped with a lot of collagen fibers. Um, and this structure is called a pachinian corpuscle or a lamellated corpuscle. Lamella means layers, so it's very layered. So these are the two things you need to know for sensory. This is a Meissner's corpuscle, also called a tactile corpuscle. And this is a pachinian or lamellated corpuscle. If I ask you to identify those two things, that's what they are. Now. I'm going to go into some of the histology. So when we go back to the previous page where we had all the structures listed, we have all the views of the eyeball that we've covered, the retina, the sagittal view of the eye. These are all the models that we've been studying. If I click on tympanic membrane, it shows me a close-up of the tympanic membrane. If I go to the next model, it'll show you a good view of the tympanic membrane, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes the cochlea, the vestibule, the semicircular canals. We've already done all that. So now, um, I'm going to go back to the files, and I'm going to go back to the lab practical one. I'm sorry for the weird navigation, but it's just the fastest way for me to find this. I'm going to scroll down to the histology slides, and I'm going to go through all the slides with you. This first slide is a very close-up. I wish we had a view that showed a little bit further out where we could tell this is epidermis and this is dermis. But this is what a Meissner's corpuscle looks like under the microscope. They always sit in these little pockets. Some of them are mangled or we cut only the side of them, but that's a perfect Meissner's corpuscle. The next slide I'm going to show you is going to be of some Pacinian corpuscles. Deep down inside of here, the Pacinian corpuscle is this large round structure. And you would have to scroll down your slide and look here that this is a Pacinian or lamellated corpuscle. We can't miss them. Okay. Now the next slide I'm going to do is going to be of our olfactory epithelium. We drew this out in lecture. The cribriform plate would be up here. So this layer, this little dark layer right here, is the olfactory epithelium. This layer would be called lamina propria. These structures here are called olfactory glands or Bowman's glands. And you can see where one of them actually would be secreting mucus on the surface here. In the olfactory epithelium, I really can't see all the layers. Some of these cells, you can see some little cilia or hair-like structures here, but they're very faint. But this would be the olfactory receptors, and you can see the basilar cells here. We're not going to get into all the different cells. Here's what you need to know for the lab test. Lamina propria, olfactory epithelium. Bowman's glands, also called olfactory glands. Some of these swollen, empty-looking cells here would be called goblet cells. They also secrete mucus. Okay, so those are the structures on your list of things to know. If you want to follow along under the histology, then we're in the sensory histology. 
This is another view of the olfactory epithelium, only it's a close-up, and you can see the olfactory receptors and the basal cells. This is a really good view of goblet cells. They swell up with mucus and get swollen. There's a Bowman's gland, and that's where the Bowman's gland would exit out here. What you need to know is lamina propria, Bowman's gland or olfactory gland, olfactory epithelium, and the cell there is a goblet cell. The next slide we're gonna look at is going to be taste buds. So on the surface of your tongue are these little bumps called papillae. So if I ask you for the entire bump, it's called a papilla. These little pockets of cells here, these little light pockets are called taste buds. On this one, you actually see an opening called a taste pore, which is kind of cool, but these are taste buds. You see some taste buds on this papilla over here also. And that's all that you need to know, okay? Next slide. This is gonna be the retina. Now this is gonna get us oriented this is the outside of the eye. This is the inside of the eye, the posterior cavity. All of these layers here are dense connective tissue with fibers running this way and running at you and running across. This would all be sclera. This dark layer that's broken up is called the choroid layer. The choroid is very vascular and that's a bunch of dried blood in the choroid. If you look carefully, there's a very thin black line right along here, all the way down. That thin black line is called the pigmented epithelium. And the way the retina is oriented is from the pigmented epithelium in, there are three layers of cells here. One layer, <coughs> excuse me, one layer of cells is kind of long, and that layer is called photoreceptors. So if I ask you to ID this layer, that layer is called the photoreceptors, or the rods and cones, which we'll talk about in lecture. When a photon of light enters the eye, it will pass the bipolar cell, I'm sorry, it passes these ganglion cells, the bipolar cells, and if it's not gonna be seen, it gets absorbed at the pigmented epithelium, okay? If it is visible light, then when it hits the photoreceptors, it will trigger an action potential in them. They will signal this layer of cells called the bipolar cells, and then the bipolar cells, which extend from here to there, are gonna signal these little dark cells here called the ganglion cells. So here's what you need to know. Sclera, choroid, pigmented epithelium, photoreceptors, bipolar cells, ganglion cells. So ID the layer, ID the dark layer, ID the thin dark layer, ID the layer of cells, ID the layer of cells, ID the layer of cells. That's what you should know for the lab test, okay? Next slide. This is a close-up of the retina, but now it's flipped. This would be sclera, this would be choroid, this is pigmented epithelium. These are photoreceptors, bipolar cells, and the occasional ganglion cell. Got it? All right, next slide. This is the crista ampullaris. So where the semicircular canals come down and swell out, they form an ampulla. Within the ampulla, there's this little comb-like structure called the crista or the crista ampullaris. This membrane would be sitting way up here, and there would be a structure called the cuffula. We will have drawn this in lecture, so you'll see all of that. But these cells right here, when the fluid brushes against them, they will signal rotational motions. So this is the crista ampullaris. The next slide is gonna go over the cochlea of the inner ear. And this is just a slide of that big flat model that we covered. This would be called the vestibular duct or scala vestibuli. This is the vestibular membrane. This is the cochlear duct or scala cochlei. And this is the tympanic duct, or scala tympani. This structure here would be the organ of corti, and it's too faint to see, but there's a very thin and very faint tectorial membrane hanging over it. And then this group of cells would be the spiral ganglion. All right? I believe this is a close-up of the cochlear duct. You see a really good organ of corti here and a really nice tectorial membrane. I hope that shows up on camera. I'm actually gonna walk around and see if it shows up. Yeah, you can see it. Good. All right, I believe that concludes all of our slides. Nope, we gotta do the endocrine slides, okay? So this is a slide of our pituitary gland. It's a close-up, but this dark area would be called the anterior pituitary or adenohypophysis. This dark, a lighter area would be called the posterior pituitary or neurohypothesis. So there's three questions we could ask. 
Identify the endocrine organ. That would be the pituitary or hypophysis. Identify this region of this organ or this region of the organ. Anterior pituitary or adenohypophysis, posterior pituitary or neurohypophysis. Okay? Next slide. <coughs> this is a very good close-up of the thyroid gland. I wish we had a, a, a bigger picture at lower magnification and this high mag, but this is a high magnification of the thyroid gland. Our thyroid gland is filled with these little structures. They're almost like a rubber ball. If you took a basketball and you injected it with um, pink jello, the pink jello is a fluid inside called colloid. And colloid contains a structure, a substance called thyroglobulin. I know our list says this is thyroglobulin, but you can't see the thyroglobulin. That would be like seeing the, the sugar inside of tea. But this is called colloid. This is the edge. So if I sliced a basketball open, if I, after I injected it with fluid, then this would be the leather of the basketball, this layer of cells. These are called follicular cells. And the entire round structure would be a follicle. So now, if I took a whole bunch of, you know those, if you go to Walmart and they have the big racks that have filled with all the little bouncy balls? Well, that's kind of what the thyroid gland is. And every bouncy ball would be called a thyroid follicle. If I slice through that randomly, I would see the outer edge, and some of the balls would be much larger if I cut them right down the middle, and if I got one on the edge, it might look smaller, but all of these would be thyroid follicles. The cells on the edge are called follicular cells. The fluid inside is called colloid. There's four questions we could ask. ID the endocrine organ. You should look at this and go, oh, that's the thyroid gland. ID the round structure, thyroid follicle. ID the cells on the edge of the round structure follicular cells. ID the pink substance inside, that's called colloid. Now, if I go to the next slide, you'll notice some thyroid follicles over here at lower magnification. This large organ is called the parathyroid gland. So the parathyroid gland is stuck inside the thyroid or on the posterior margin. So one of the clues you're looking at the parathyroid gland is you see the thyroid follicles. The cells within the parathyroid gland are called chief cells. And that's all that you need to know. ID the endocrine organ or ID the cells within that organ. Next slide. This represents the thymus gland. Our thymus gland has large areas that are filled with adipose and then there's these little areas that have all these dark cells. The dark cells in here, most of them are lymphocytes. So if I ask you to identify all these little dark cells, the answer is lymphocytes. But within the thyroid, I'm sorry, within the thymus gland, there's these little pink rings and folds of cells, which are called a thymic corpuscle or a Hassel's corpuscle. You'll see them on the list of things to know. So there's three questions we could ask. Identify the endocrine organ. You should look at this and know that's the thymus gland. Identify the structure at the pointer, thymic corpuscle or Hassel's corpuscle. Either, either answer is acceptable and identify the dark cells, lymphocytes, okay? Next slide. This represents the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland has three major layers to it. This outer covering right out here, this edge is called the adrenal cap capsule, okay? So if I ask you for that layer, it's the capsule or the adrenal capsule. And if you notice, there's a, a layer that goes all the way down and you can kind of make out there's a little edge that goes all the way around here. This area in the middle would be called the medulla, and all of this between the medulla and the capsule would be called the cortex. So ID the major layer, ID the major layer, ID the major layer. Capsule, adrenal cortex, adrenal medulla. Now within the adrenal cortex, there are three sublayers. If you notice, there's sort of a dark layer right here. And then there's a thick layer that's kind of light pink. And then there's this broken up layer just before we get to the medulla. This layer up here is called the zona glomerulosa. Just this thin dark layer up here. It's the zona glomerulosa. This much thicker layer here is called the zona fasciculata. And then this little broken up layer just before we get to the medulla is called the zona reticularis. ID the major, ID the major layer would be the cortex. ID the individual layer, the individual layer, or the individual layer would be zona glomerulosa, zona reticularis, I'm sorry, zona fasciculata, and zona reticularis. Sorry if I keep closing my eyes, the light gets in my eyes. All right, 
and the endocrine organ would be the adrenal gland. So quick review, major layer, capsule, major layer, cortex, adrenal cortex, major layer, adrenal medulla. Identify that specific layer, that's the zona glomerulosa, this specific layer would be the zona reticularis, and this third layer here would be, I'm sorry, I said that wrong again, zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, and then zona reticularis. It's go for the middle. If you say go for the middle, middle is medulla. The G in go is glomerulosa. The F in four is fasciculata. And the R is reticularis. Take the O's out and you go, go for the middle. Glomerulosa, fasciculata, reticularis, medulla. All right, sorry. And if we move on, here's another close up of the adrenal gland and you can see sort of the cortex, but I don't like that view, so we'll move on. Don't worry about that slide. This is a slide of the pancreas. Our pancreas has these little round structures of cells called pancreatic acini, and they make these little rings. All these dark cells out here are called pancreatic acini or acinar cells. This light patch is called a pancreatic islet, also called an islet of Langerhans. Islet is spelled I-S-L-E-T. Islet means little island. So this would be a pancreatic islet or islet of Langerhans. These would all be acinar cells or pancreatic acini. And the slide is the pancreas. Those are the three things you should know. We're going to be talking about the functions of these things in lecture. Now this is a slide of the human testes. There is a tube that exits the testes and coils up on the surface called the epididymis. As the epididymis enters the testes, it branches into hundreds of smaller tubes. And when we slice into the testes, you see all these dark outlines here would be these tubes. They are called seminiferous tubules. So every one of these dark rings, and this is a better view here, this would be a seminiferous tubule, part of a seminiferous tubule, part of a seminiferous tubule. So if I ask you to identify the round structures, seminiferous tubules which, by the way, is where spermatozoa are being produced, and some of these cells are called nurse cells or Sertoli cells. We'll talk about those. Now, if you look in between all these seminiferous tubules, you'll see these cells that lie outside or in between them. These are called interstitial cells. So on this slide, there's three questions I can ask on the lab test. Identify the endocrine organ. You should look at that and go, that's the testes. Identify all the round structures on the slide, seminiferous tubules. Identify these cells that lie outside those round structures or in between them, and those would be interstitial cells. Again, we'll talk about the functions of all this in lecture. And finally, for the lab test, you have the human ovary. <coughs> now, the ovary gets its name because it's an oval mass, and it has small structures inside of it called follicles, and within those follicles is the egg cell called an oocyte. So if you look up here, these are little tiny um, primary follicles, okay? And some of these primary follicles, when they start to divide, are going to get a little bit bigger and become a secondary follicle. And that little round cell inside of there is called an oocyte. One of the clues that it's a secondary follicle is it's not so large, and the oocyte and a small ring of cells are floating in the center of the whole follicle. At some point of development, that group of cells will attach to another group of cells inside this follicle. And when we get to this stage of development, it's called a tertiary follicle or a graphian follicle. Tertiary is spelled T-E-R-T-I-A-R-Y. Tertiary or tertiary is how it's pronounced. It means the third level of development. Primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary, pentanary, and on. So this is called a tertiary follicle or a graphian follicle. And that little cell inside is called the oocyte. This is an enlarged view or a magnified view of a graphene follicle, and that's the oocyte. And you can see how it's attached to the side wall. That indicates it's a graphene follicle. So, four questions, no, three questions. ID the endocrine organ, ovary. ID the surround structure, graphene follicle. ID the cell inside, oocyte. That's what you need to know for the lab test. So that's all your histology for the lab test, okay? Let me turn this off real quick so that you're not looking at all this funny stuff. So, I hope you learned something. I hope you had as much fun as I did. All of these models on the eye, 
the ear, um, the skin model, as well as the slides are all on your first lab exam. Please study. Please know the stuff I asked you to know. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I'll see you for the next lab test.